Three new Tesla alternatives just got unveiled and each with their own unique value to the consumers, including some really cool tech we haven't seen before. But are they really competitors to Tesla? Well, we'll seek that answer from Inside EVs and Forbes contributor Tom Malogny. Rivian has unveiled yet another Tesla-like product, finally announced who's going to be making their battery cells and even got some real world use out of a couple of their trucks retrieving a space capsule. Very cool. Ford has announced their own version of the autopilot-like feature and it came with some Tesla-like Twitter drama. I'll tell you all about it coming up next. Welcome to E4 Electric, your number one source of electric car scoop. If this is your first time here, all you have to do is click on that subscribe button and the bell notification icon so you don't miss anything moving forward. Let's get to the top story and I have to admit I did not want this day to come because I loved, loved the Mercedes-Benz EQS concept and I didn't want to be Taycan'd. And yes, I made a verb out of Porsche Taycan. It's that feeling when you see the concept car that's beautiful, like Mission E, and then you see the production version, like the Taycan. But the day has come and Mercedes-Benz has finally unveiled the EQS. And I have to say that even though it is not as gorgeous as the concept, it's actually not bad at all. The front is very similar very similar to the concept the back is not but i think i can live with that but they did keep the maybach like a two-tone paint job and it will be an option of course they have already unveiled the amazing luxury interior a week ago but i cannot stop staring at it it is absolutely beautiful but the big news here is that besides lucid air and maybe audi e-tron gt this is going to be the only luxury electric sedan coming on the market this year. And people like myself have been waiting for this, the luxury electric sedan for a long, long time. It looks like the EQS will have a range of over 400 of EPA rated miles and tons and tons of tech toys. My favorite ones are the self-opening and closing doors by gestures and of course the huge hyperscreen comfortably resting across the entire dashboard. You will have a choice between one, two or three motors. Collect all three and you'll get a toy. It will have a 107.8 kilowatt hour battery. 200 kilowatt fast charging, real wheel steering, and a huge augmented reality head-up display. It was unveiled on April the 15th, uh, the tax day here in the United States, and apparently Mercedes thinks a lot of you are getting a huge refund because even though no official pricing was announced, but it looks like it will start at around $120,000. It will go on sale this fall. Now, of course, the debate has already started. Is this a true competitor to the Tesla Model S? I personally don't think so. I think these are very different cars for two very different audiences. Even the tech is very different in these two different cars targeting very different people. But of course, as always, the time will tell. Let's talk about another really cool electric car that was unveiled by Mercedes-Benz rival Audi. But before that, of course, a quick reminder that this video and this channel is sponsored by Charity Stars. Enter to win this amazing Tesla Model Y performance, $10,000 and other goodies using the link in the description of this video. And even if you don't win, your money will go to a great cause supporting two wonderful charities. Hurry, because only a few days left. And by new charge, wanna buy another electric car but don't want to deal with paying an electrician to rewire your home? Well, check out the smart splitter from new charge. You can charge both cars with one outlet using the smart splitter and never drop a penny on an electrician. Check out the link and a discount code in the description of this video. Audi has unveiled its third, one, two, three, that's right, third electric vehicle. That's three more than Toyota has. They already have the e-tron SUV, the beautiful e-tron GT, but this will be the very first one based on the Volkswagen's MEB platform. And it will be the most affordable electric Audi yet. Of course, I'm talking about the Q4 e-tron and check this out. One of the presenters at their world premiere was Olivia Wilde. And since I am binge watching the TV show House right now, that was quite a treat. And I also just found out that me and Olivia attended the same event, uh, the launch of the e-tron in San Francisco several years ago. But at that time, I didn't even know who she was. 
what were we talking about? Oh yeah, electric cars. Now the Q4 e-tron will come in two different body shapes, just like a lot of Audi vehicles, uh, the regular and the sport back. And of course you're wondering, what is the difference? Now, let me put it this way. If you are married, you go with the regular Q4 e-tron. But if you are a single guy, you go with a sport back. I hope that clears it up. The Q4 e-tron is essentially the luxury version of the Volkswagen ID4 with the biggest tech upgrade being the augmented reality head-up display, which I absolutely love. It will come with the 55 and 82 kilowatt hour battery options, but the smaller one will probably just be available in Europe. Other specs include 125 kilowatt fast charging, 0 to 60 in about 6.1 seconds, probably around the same 250 miles miles of APA range like the ID4 though last week the ID4 Pro got a 260 miles of EPA range. Here in North America, it will probably be priced just under $50,000 and it will be available at dealerships later this year. Let's move on to the next one and yet another auto manufacturer unveiling their third electric car. And of course, I'm talking about the Xpong Motors. They already have the G3 and P7 already on the market with G3 selling in Europe now. The P5 is a good looking younger brother of the P7, which I got to drive a month ago and was quite impressed. Xpong is stepping up the self driving tech in the P5 with the new Xpilot 3.5 with 32 perception sensors. The deliveries will start later this year. But the biggest news here is that the P5 is going to be the very first production car to use LiDARs for their self-driving tech. As a matter of fact, it has two of them, one on each side of the vehicle's front. This will be a pretty big test for the LiDAR technology, something that Elon Musk has rejected over and over again. By the way, speaking of Elon Musk, it looks like the feud between Tesla and Xpeng Motors is over. Tesla has settled with their former employee out of court as an independent third-party comparison of the self-driving code submitted by both companies showed that no Tesla code was ever used in Xpeng Tech. So I'm pretty sure that my Twitter feed is already full of Elon Musk's apologies. Um, or he's probably just, he's probably just typing it in right now. We'll, we'll be here any minute, any minute to sort through all of the toys that we just got to see. We turn to the Inside EVs and now Forbes contributor, Tom Malogny. All right, Tom, lots to talk about this week. Uh, and so we're gonna do the uh, electric car speed dating. We'll start with the Mercedes EQS. That was the biggest unveiling, go. Love the interior, awesome, total luxury, gorgeous. The exterior, I'm not, uh, I'm going to reserve judgment till I see it in person because I spoke to a few people that saw it in person and they said it looked so much better in, in person than it does in pictures. So I'm going to reserve judgment on the exterior, but the interior is drop dead gorgeous in my opinion. All right. You love the interior, but don't like the uh, uh, video crew at Mercedes. I understand. Now, listen, of course, the conversation right away goes to is this a competitor to Model S? Uh, you know my opinion about it. What's yours? So, you know, there's going to be some, you know, cross shopping, but really this is more of a, of a Lucid Air competitor than it is a Model S competitor. This is a luxury car. The Model S is not a luxury car. Agreed. All right. So let's move on. Uh, Audi, uh, Q4 e-tron, uh, you know, uh, the cheapest electric car that Audi is going to be making probably for a while. But let's compare that uh, because it actually, you know, if we had a conversation a year ago, the only competitor would have been Model Y. But now we got Mach-E and its sister car, ID4. How, does, how do you think it's going to do against all those? And soon the, the Ionic 5 and the Nissan Araya, that segment is going to be crowded. Um, but I love the way this Audi Q4 looks, honestly. I think it looks way better than the original e-tron. Um, and if it could be priced right, I think Audi's going to do well with it. It's, it's the size that a lot of people are looking for. It's going to have good range. And, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's like a luxury version of the ID4, you know, in, uh, in, in, in a nice tuxedo. Um, I love it. I think it's going to do okay if Audi brings enough of them to the U.S. That's the big if. If they only send one to each dealer, it won't sell. 
I love when cars play dress up. That's right. Okay, uh, let's move on. Uh, this brand we both uh, like, uh, and they're one of the sponsors of the channel. Uh, not of this video, but uh, of some other videos. Xpong, they just unveiled P5. Uh, a pretty pretty good looking sedan. Lots of new tech. Uh, a lot of it uh, is obviously from P7. But the biggest thing, well, I'll, 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 I'll let you talk about it first. Right, so the P5 is going to be the first car to incorporate LiDAR into its um, advanced driver assist systems. Now, I say that with a qualification. Yes, the Audi 8, 8 had it, um, but it didn't use it. It, had, it was equipped with the LiDAR systems, but they never really used it. Um, and and the, the P5 is going to, it's going to be an integral part of their uh, self-driving technology. And, uh, you know, it's going to be interesting to see how well it works. Now, do you think this is a, a, a more of a test, not so much for Xpong, but for the LiDAR technology? As, you know, it's been a lot of conversation, right? Isn't this a big test for the LiDAR technology? And if this doesn't work out very well, um, this may be the end of it. Could it be? You know, I don't really see it that way because it's just a complementary technology, Alex. It's not like the system runs on LiDAR. Um, it's just adding it. it. The system still has cameras and ultrasonic sensors and radar. You know, the, 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 um, the, the LiDAR just adds another level of redundancy. And from what Xpeng told me is it's necessary for the in-city autonomous driving. Um, and that's what this new P5 is going to do. It's going to have Xpilot 3.5, which is going to allow autonomous driving in the city environments. That's not something that the P7 could do. Did you guys know that Tom also has a YouTube channel? I didn't know until very recently, so I figured I shared it with you so you can check it out in the description of this video. And by the way, since we taped our conversation about 24 hours ago, there were two more unveilings. Volkswagen has unveiled the ID6, a pretty good looking full size SUV. Unfortunately, it will be for the Chinese market only. And Mercedes Benz is unveiling the all electric EQB as this video being posted. But don't worry, I will cover it for you next time. But for now, all I got is this teaser image. Let's move on to the next story and we're going to talk about Rivian that's been following Tesla's footsteps quite closely lately, announcing their own fast charging network and their own collision and service centers. And now they're taking yet another page out of Tesla's playbook, announcing their own insurance. Now, Tesla is only offering auto insurance and only in California. And on top of that, it hasn't been very popular just yet where Rivian is going to be launching their insurance in 40 states and will bundle it with home insurance and will cover other vehicles like motorcycles, boats, and etc. And even it will cover accessories like their own portable kitchen and the rooftop tent. Now, it looks like Rivian Insurance will also be covering the rocket recovery. A couple of Rivian trucks were spotted at Blue Origin Spaceship Recovery Site retrieving the reusable space pod. The Blue Origin is an aerospace company owned by Jeff Bezos, who owns part of Rivian through his stake in Amazon. Now, one of the few things that we didn't know about Rivian was who was going to provide the battery cells for them. Check out me trying to get that out of their CEO, RJ Scarange, back in 2018 at the original unveiling. And look how easily he gets away with not telling me the name of the company. You know, over 400 miles on a truck like that, that's pretty impressive. Is there anything you can tell us about where these batteries are coming from? Yeah. So it's a, it's a cylindrical cell, and we integrate that into a module. And we have on the vehicle our big pack, a 180 kilowatt hour pack, has 15 of those modules. I'm sorry, 12 of those modules, each with 15 kilowatt hours of energy. So you look at 180 kilowatt hours of energy, that's 80% more than the biggest pack on the market today. So it's a very big pack, and we package it all very elegantly into the floor of the vehicle. I was so smitten by the truck, I forgot my own question. But this week, they have finally announced that the battery cells 
will be provided by Samsung SDI. Let's move on to the next story, and Ford has announced the Blue Cruise, a hands-free highway driving system very similar to Tesla Autopilot and GM's Super Cruise. Now, if you've been watching my channel for a while, you probably know I'm not a big fan of either one of those. As a matter of fact, very recently, when I was testing the new Chevy Bolt EUV, the Super Cruise, as an act of revenge, I am assuming, eh, kind of tried to kill me. Though I do have to say they had a pretty good eye tracking system and no matter how many times I tried to fool it, it disengaged every time I took my eyes off the road. But at the end of the day, I really don't think either one of those systems should be allowed on the road because they're essentially conducting human trials. But let's see if Ford can do better. It is a level up from their current Ford Copilot 360 suite that you can find on the Mustang Mach-E. And it will be pushed as an optional over-the-air software update to the Ford Mustang Mach-E and F-150 owners in the second part of this year. If you don't already have it included in your current package, the price will be $3,600. Much like the Super Cruise, the Blue Cruise will only work in pre-qualified sections of divided highways. And I gotta say, I am not a big fan of that. It's like saying, uh, here's your burger, Mr. Guberman, but you can only bite into it where there are pickles. And if you miss one, we will put you in the burger jail and you won't be able to have one until your next meal. Well, I don't want a burger anymore. But wait, no new story about Tesla's autopilot competitor is complete without some drama. And this one is no exception because Ford's CEO Jim Farley went on Twitter and said this. We tested it in the real world so our customers don't have to. Now, obviously, it is a shot at what I call Tesla's human trials, but I think Jim is missing a bigger point. The bigger point is not to have to test anything in the real world at all. You should only use the data from the real world to plug it into a simulator because in there you can simulate millions and millions different scenarios in a matter of days and not years or maybe centuries that it would take in the real world. But let's give Ford a chance and see what happens. And by the way, if you are wondering what to watch next, why not check out my conversation with Tom Malogny about the fact that just came out very recently that Elon Musk tried to recruit Herbert Dees as the CEO of Tesla back in 2015. That conversation is available for my premium members. You can join by clicking on the join button right there. All right, looking forward to all of your comments. Other than that, see you guys next time. And remember to stay charged.